Hello, good evening from Hamden and the final sports scene of the season. Coming up, highlights of this afternoon's Tennant Scottish Cup final between Rangers and Dundee United. And whichever way the result went, a little bit of history would be made. Either United would finally win the Scottish Cup after six previous attempts, or Rangers would complete a first ever second consecutive treble. With me are Eamon Bannon and Terry Butcher, and you'll hear their comments on how the Cup was won after we take you back to just before three o'clock this afternoon. The Tennant Scottish Cup final, Rangers against Dundee United, commentary from Billy McNeil and Jock Brown. Well, you hear the noise increasing among the supporters. The balloons are released at both ends of the pitch. The Dundee United, tangerine, black and white. And at the other end, the Rangers balloons similarly out, red, white and blue. And making for a carnival atmosphere for the big day of the football calendar the Tennant Scottish Cup final and the team's expected now at any second here they come led by their respective managers and by the match officials Rangers in their new newly designed strip well greeted there by the Rangers supporter at one end and the Dundee United supporters to the east on the right hand side well, let's check on this afternoon's teams once again there's the Rangers likely lineup certainly the personnel's correct and the way that we're expecting them to play with McCoy and Hakeley the two pronged attack and the United that's their lineup in terms of players and a likely formation but we'll have to wait and see if Gordon Petric is sweeping behind two markers and Ivan Golats will make his tactics clear in the opening minutes I'm sure when the game unfolds and the referee Mr Douglas Hope from Erskine who refereed the final two years ago when Rangers defeated Airdrie the last cup final at the National Stadium he's back again his linesman on the left Graham Allison from Dumfries and Donald McVicker is on the right from Kirlouk a grade one referee the mascots depart Nikola Rubchak and Andrew Gill the Rangers mascot the nine year old from Oak Bank Primary in Perth and the match is about to begin with Dundee United kicking off referee Douglas Hope blows his whistle and the 1994 Tennant Scottish Cup final is underway well looking instantly to see the formations Morris Malpass has moved right to the shoulders of Ali McCoy with Brian Welsh on Mark Hately and Gordon Petrich in a sweeper role Bowman and Hannah in the centre of midfield as we expected Dallin White in the right, McAnally White in the left and the wild card factor I think may be provided by Andy McLaren for Dundee United who started the match White on the left hand side It looks certainly as though United are, are allowing Christian Daly to go right up front it may well be once the game settles down a little bit that he plays a wide role on one side and and Andy McLaren plays a wide role on this other side to try and stretch Rangers at the back. This is Brian Welsh, who really has matured immensely this season. Awkward one. And Gary Stevens did well getting to that. There was some uncertainty between Stevens and McPherson. Brewster was hoping to take advantage. Hatley with his shadow, Brian Welsh. The man marking continued by Cleland taking on Gordon Jury on the flank. McAnally is on Neil Murray. Hatley's with Welsh. Gary Stevens has missed so much of the season through injury. Found it difficult to get back, but he's here for the cup final. Good long throw. Awkward there from Petrich. Shivani camps under pressure from McCoy. The referee has given the free kick. But a reminder there for Guido van de Kamp that Mark Haitley is not the only threat when the ball's in the air. Rangers are always very dangerous at situations like that because Haitley's cross in the air, he takes the bigger defenders away, but Adam McCoy clearly fouls the goalkeeper. David Robertson's throw, the target is Haitley. McCoy was there with Mal Pass. The corner kick's been given. Mal Pass looked to grieve there. The United skipper playing in his fifth final and still to collect the winner's medal 
So Gordon Jury taking them in both flanks. McPherson attacking this. It's off the line. Blocked on the line by McInally. United were exposed there as McPherson got the better of Christian Derry. But on the break, Alec Callan going through the middle. A chance here for United. He's brought down to the back. Referee waves play on as Maxwell falls on the ball. And referee Douglas Hope has his work cut out here to calm the players down. But it was a golden opportunity for Clellan and a very loud appeal for a penalty kick as he was in the act of shooting. Here we see the pass, the pass pushing clear through the middle. There's Alec Clellan going on to the ball. I think he missed kicked in actual fact. I think he missed kicked and then caused the defenders to run into him. And there on the goal line with that chance, McPherson's header clearly not over the line. Jim McAnally did the job for United. And Ivan Golat shaking his head, perhaps thinks that United might have had a penalty kick, but it did appear as though there wasn't any contact. I also think it's a case of the wrong player being in the right position. You know, the difference between being a forward and you see, you get a forward in that situation, he's confident, he knows what he's doing. And I think Alec Clell made a terrific run, got himself in that position, and then hesitated just that fraction too long. Well, Alec Clell is one of those modern, all-round utility players, but the one position he's never been playing on a regular basis is striker. And almost appeared to overrun the pass in the first instance in his anxiety to test Ali Maxwell. Well, the early activity for Maxwell, his last cup final appearance was in 1991 when he was the winning side for Motherwell and was the victim of a serious abdominal injury during the match. He was barely using his pace on the right, sending the ball across early. Maxwell making a very good catch with Brewster and McLaren was supporting and this is shaping to be a marvellous final. Well, here we see the good ball in from the, the wide position. Doesn't really trouble the goalkeeper, but certainly at the minute, with all the credentials here, for this being an epic of a final, because within the space of a minute there, we almost had a goal at either end. Petrich to Malpass. Casual on the ball, robbed by Ferguson. This is McCoy. And Petrich makes the tackle outside the box. That's a free kick. Well, an error, a rare error by Maurice Malpass created this opportunity. No argument, though, about the foul. And they camp organising a four-man wall. Now, David Roberts is hovering here. He may fancy his chances, having scored a couple of spectacular goals in recent weeks. But he's now moving away. It's being left to Hately, I suspect, unless it's not square for Robertson. There's Hately! Beautifully bent in. Just about a foot too high. He's certainly got the ability to bend this one in here. It's not all that far away, but not a particularly good wall that United put up. But here we see him, that left foot of his, wasn't all that far away. Clellan well forward again. That's a good cross, and Ferguson heads it behind. Corner kick conceded. Certainly United are doing welcome down either flank, an interesting role that, that, that the three front players are adopting because they're creating problems for Rangers fullbacks because they're dragging them away from the position and allowing the, the, the attack to come from midfield. The out swinger this time. Maxwell had no option there but to concede another corner. Andy McLaren's corner kick. And he comes straight across to the left to take an in-swinger for United. Petrich is up, so is Welsh. Daly two. Welsh attacking this. Did well to reach it. Good header by Welsh. Matching the effort of Dave McPherson recently at the other end. And Richard Goff with a calm header, finds his goalkeeper to take the strain off the Rangers' defence. It's a good effort from, from Big Welsh here because he gets up and amongst the whole posse of players there. And reminds Rangers of his ability in there. A 
Alan with Stevens. Now McCall. That's Murray. Jury's layoff. Here's McCall again. Good possession play by Rangers. Probing for an opening. David Robertson well forward. Jury comes off his marker. It's back with McPherson. Stevens on the right, calling for the ball. Ferguson trying to find him now. Well, Stevens wanted that ball played across a good deal earlier when Dave McPherson was in possession. Brewster again causing problems for golf. That's Petrich. Advantage will apply there. It would have been a foul, I think, on Bowman. There's no offside here. Flat back four is beaten here as Dilly played the ball in. That's great handling by Maxwell. Well, he took a knock there, but it was terrific play on the flank again from Nundee United. Here we see him breaking through, breaking that away position. Really, he tries to go on to the ball early because at that stage he's got men free. All credit to Alan Maxwell, comes out, smothers it, takes it in a very difficult situation and clears the danger. Damage here inflicted in both Ali Maxwell and Gary Stevens who came hurtling in there. Both players requiring some attention now as a result of that. But a reminder also for later Rangers about the dangers of the flat back four and the offside trap. Well, that's right. We've got to pay credit to United front three because they're working Rangers back four very hard indeed. And Christian Daly in particular has been a real threat to them, a real live wire. He's using his pace well. Here we see Ali Maxwell come out there. Takes that ball in a very difficult situation. Gary Stevens, I can tell you, is having to work hard now to run off some damage. Suggestion, in fact, that he has changed position temporarily to take him out of the defensive line. Ian Ferguson dropped back to right back. Here he is in trouble against McLaren. McLaren's early cross, and a brilliant effort from Bailey. Once again, the pace and the adventure of Dundee United, so effective. We've got this pace down either side here, and this is a very good ball into the middle. Christian Dillon makes a good front post run, doesn't quite direct they had the way he wanted it a good cross in look at that good left foot there it gets on to ahead of Rangers defenders and really those front three for United are causing Rangers back for all sorts of problems at this particular stage well, the unlucky Gary Stevens hurtling off Walter Smith reorganising the Rangers lineup. well it's been a very difficult season for Gary Stevens, who was indestructible for so many years now he goes off and Mikhailichenko comes on and confirmation of the alteration is Neil Murray at right back Gordon Jury wide right Mikhailichenko wide left and the midfield restored to normal with Ferguson and McCall in the centre well in there caught by Jury in the act of clearing Rangers now trying to settle in midfield to begin to dominate with Ferguson and McCall that's the target Hasn't been easy, though, against Bowman and Hanna. Goff to McPherson. McCall over on the left. That's a very good ball into space for Haitley. And that was very close indeed. And I think Guido van der Kamp was taken completely by surprise there. And I'm not at all sure he would have saved that had it been inside the post. He certainly was a very confident goalkeeper because here we see the shot going right across the face of goals. He obviously knew exactly where he was, but uh, certainly took it very calmly, didn't he? Very calmly, he did. Fine running. Brian Welsh won't be happy to allow Haitley that couple of yards he made in the run. Well, Brian Welsh contributed so much to getting his team here and then has the task of coping with Mark Haitley in the final. Well, there may be more work for Welsh here, marking Haitley for this long throw from Robertson. Oh, one and again, out there to Ferguson, there's Mikhailichenko, breaking wide and clear in the end, with the linesman's flag staying down to the annoyance of the United players. Well, perhaps the best opening so far, falling to Mikhailichenko. It's 
a header out by Brian Welsh, but there you are, that's it here, it's important not to lose, but certainly looked to me as though Miklachenko might have been in offside position, but all credit to the goalkeeper for getting down the smaller there. And I did scrambling the ball away, allowing Daly to take this for a run. That's a good change of pace. Very quick indeed, runs very well with the ball at his feet. Combination of Ferguson and McCall, halting his progress. Hannah did well on Ferguson, that's Brewster. Daly again. Throw goes to United, and Neil Murray almost getting himself into trouble there. Looked as though they were going to kick the ball towards the referee, then realised kind of trouble that would have given him. Just daily again. Using Fell under the decoy that time. Malpass strongly in on McCoy. That's Bowman. And now Petric. There's David Robertson. Five minutes left in the first half or four and a half minutes. United and Rangers all square, but Brewster trying to change that, coming forward, taking on McPherson. And a brilliant save from Maxwell. Well, that's the kind of form that Craig Brewster has been showing all season. They could so easily have given United the lead, but for the heroics of Maxwell. This is what he's done particularly well. He's drifted just away from, the, from his marker, but he's good at coming at that, steps across him and strikes a good shot but all credit to Ali Maxwell makes a good save at a very important time Walsh winning that Maxwell under pressure and the whistle goes for the challenge inside the area by Bowman on McCoy's well Davy Bowman has been outstanding again for United 2 as Welsh plays that in Bowman piling in here on top of McCoy's a little bit of injury time in the first half, that's why the game continues. Cullen with the throw, here's Brewster. And Alec Cullen collects the ball for the referee, it's half-time. An excellent 10 in Scottish Cup final. Jim McAnally, a hero for United, clearing a Dave McPherson header off the line. And then Craig Brewster coming very close towards half-time with that seeding drive, brilliantly parried by Ali Maxwell. It really has been a terrific first half and United have really promised and delivered so that's the position here at half time lots more drama to come without question but at half time it's Rangers nil and the United nil the referee Douglas Hope checks his watch and Rangers get it away and it will be fascinating to see what kind of alterations may have been made tactically by either side the managers, Walter Smith and Ivan Golatz, would have had a lot of work to do at half-time. From the Dundee United point of view, I suspect it would have been a question of looking for more of the same. There goes Daly, and Maxwell coming to the edge of the area. Daly's pace is undoubtedly a major threat. He's back on the right where he started the match, playing against David Robertson. Maxwell realising the danger, coming out. It's back now with Jim McAnally, who's continuing at right-back. Long range effort there by David Hanna. Plenty of pace in the header. Young player signed for Hamilton Thistle, the nursery, which also provided Billy McKinley. He's done well, he's, he's got himself in the edge of the box, but that kind of header's not really going to trouble a goalkeeper of matchless quality. The Rangers supporters trying to give some vocal assistance to their favourites the start of the second half Brewster judging that well, getting it ahead of Goff here's Neil Murray put under pressure by McLaren that'll be a throw to Rangers a oh, bubbly character, full of confidence and very good close control Haitley's layoff, here goes McCoy's Cut off swiftly by Bowman. It's eight years to the day since Jim McAnally and Dave Bowman signed. I need a chance for Christian Daly. And he scores. Brewster has. United ahead. A disaster for Ali Maxwell. Two minutes into the second half. Craig Brewster.
Musa gets his 20th goal of the season. Ivan Golan celebrates, and Rangers wonder how it happened. It was amazing the way in which this should never have been a problem for Rangers. The pass back from McPherson. It was driven against Daly by Maxwell. He couldn't recover. Daly hit the ball off the post. The supporting player was Brewster. And Dundee United are in front. David first, just a little bit careless with the pass back. And you see it, Maxwell hits it off him. Unlucky not to collect the ball, but all credit to Christian Daly gets here. She's against, and I think I could have scored from there. Well, the score line changes. Craig Brewster, the man most likely always for Dundee United, puts them ahead. And that's Golan Petric. Now Daly taking his eye off the ball. Karachenko finds Robertson. Slice clearance there, but the offside flag is up against McCoist. Well, that goal again. Back with Maxwell, he's never been happy with the ball in that position. He couldn't gather it again when he had a second chance. Daly did well to keep that across the goal. And the first player to react was Brewster. Well, it's clearly a consideration before the match. David Dodds, the Rangers coach out there in the track. Andrew Waddle, the fourth official, waving him back. David Dodds, like Carchie Knox, Billy Kirkwood and Walter Smith and the Rangers coaching staff have been in losing United sides in finals. Archie Knox and Walter Smith together in 1974. The match in which Celtic won with three goals to nil. Here's Stuart McCall. That's good play to the byline. Mikalachenko! And saved by Bandicap. The save of the match so far without question. Denying Alexei Mikalachenko. Superb play by McCall. It's one of the few occasions that Rangers have got to that byline. There's Mikulajenko. Hits the ball so well, and but what a save from Van der Kamp. Well, how vital that might be before the end. Here's Jury driving it in low this time. Bowman makes the clearance. United looking for relief now, finding Brewster up front. Now Cleland. Daly calls for the ball on the right. Goff read that well to come across. Robertson preferred not to use the pass back. Murray had no qualms though. Maxwell in his weaker foot to the left. Martinelli's header. That's Daly. A miscue there by Daly. It is easy for Ali Maxwell. So the save by Van de Kamp to be seen from behind the goal it was Mikalichenko who struck this superbly. It really was a remarkable save. Scoreline tells the story. United leading by a goal to nil, provided by Craig Brewster. Ferguson making room for himself. That's a careless pass, though. Brewster was strong on the tackle. Powerful figure. Needs support. Loses his right boot. Clearly, the heel was off there. He got rid of it so they could make the pass. Means he's out of the penalty box. Back here with Cleland, now Hanna. Fine play by the youngster. Now McLaren. Taking on Murray, looking for a good cross. Here's Brewster. Back to McAnally, a shooting chance on here. Well, engineered the opening very well indeed, McAnally. Headed pass back from Petric, totally secure. It's a good back post cross, and when the ball comes down to Jim McNally, he knows what he's doing. He's hoping that he gets a good shot in there, but it's not really one that's going to trouble the goalkeeper. It, nevertheless, another threat from United. But a jersey pulling there, clearly by McLaren. The Rangers have a free kick. Goff's in a hurry, not surprisingly. Awkward there for McNally, that's Mikalichenko. Almost taking a head off Malpass. Well, that was fortunate for United. It was struck very, very well by Mikalichenko. Alpa still on the ground here. And Rangers keeping the ball in play. Alpa is on the deck as Goff uses McPherson. And McPherson reacts to the request from the referee to send the ball out. 
And they'll look get possession back from United when the throw is taken. A blow to the side of the head there for Malpass. And he should recover all right. And Mikhlachenko controls it very well, hits it so well from there and... It's perhaps fortunate for United that Morris Malpass was in the way, but let's hope it recovers quickly. So the prospect now of a dramatic late entrance from Duncan Ferguson in particular. Ferguson playing it long, and here's Mikhalichenko back to Haitley! <laughs> Relief for Van de Kamp. The weaker side, the right when he hit that. It's certainly trouble to keep up. Again, Mikulachenko is involved right in the heat of everything, but Mark Hater with his right foot. And Guido Gump, Van der Kamp just gets that long bit of that maybe he's entitled to. Well, there was a layoff from Mikulachenko, who is certainly a threat now to United. It's hit very well by Haitley. So Goff retrieves. Rangers prepare to bring on Duncan Ferguson. McPherson comes charging forward. Well, that's good running by McPherson. Now assessing the options, going for the byline. Denied by Petric. Superb defending. Now the counter attack is on. Brewster's on his own though. Hustled by Ian Ferguson. Good play by Brewster. Hannah. Excellent football from Dundee United's youngster in midfield. Here's the back in alley. Picking out the run made by Bowman, that was the one he went for. Goff did well for Rangers. Malpass up there with McCoy. This is Jury. They want to test the pace of Cleland, but he's got plenty of that, the young United defender. So the change is being made now by Rangers. Yeah, good shot. We see it again, but he did want to come, let's it run under his body, but uh, recovers to take away. Ali McCoy is withdrawn, the Rangers supporters not too happy about that. And the replacement is Duncan Ferguson, the most controversial figure in Scottish football just now. And he has the chance to put one over his old teammates. Spent the season with Rangers from Dundee United, played in the Cup Final of 1991 in the first half and then had to go off injured. And he's in the ball straight away, he's offside though. Flag was up. Free kick to United. Well, the prospect of Duncan Ferguson turning this game around for Rangers really is a fascinating one in all the circumstances. Well, certainly United can expect an aerial bombardment now, and you know, with Brian Welsh occupied with uh, Mark, Mark Haitley, it's going to be interesting to see who pick Ferguson up. Well, it's going to be Gordon Petric by the look of the reorganisation made by Dundee United. And Malpass has gone to sweeper. Well, matching the physique. Welsh is still with Haitley. And it's Mikarichenko has taken a more central role, followed though by Jim McInally. So United countering all those tactical manoeuvres from Rangers. Here's Bowman. Couldn't quite get a grip of the ball. Well, there's going to be an onslaught from Rangers, I think, before the end. A little over a quarter of an hour remaining. 1-0 to United. Here's Robertson over on the right. Never quite so comfortable there. Well, David Robertson has given a lot, been given the license to go wandering over there to the far side. Or good of Camp. A little bit of fortune, which good goalkeepers require. Brewster with golf. Haitley's layoff, missing out McCall. Here's Petric. Offside clearly against Brewster. The Rangers back four. Well organised to move forward in the line for that. Quickly taken by Goff, that free kick to McPherson. Now McCall. Petric. Flicked on by Daly. There's time here for Goff. Well, I wonder if United will consider a fresh pair of legs up front to relieve some of the pressure. 
in the odd breaks. They have Jenna Nixon available who could do just that. Gary Boland, too, is a tremendously powerful athletic figure. A calls pass. McPherson again not picked up coming forward. McPherson again, that's very well held by Van de Kamp, but United really have to cope with Dave McPherson. They've allowed him to come forward at will in the last quarter of an hour or so. Yes, we see Dave McPherson stepping forward confidently. In actual fact, it looks so comfortable stepping onto it. Hits a good shot that good Van Kamp takes very comfortably. But interestingly enough, Duncan Ferguson is playing a very wide position, and I think Ivan Golic is gambling just a little bit by sending Petric out there to look after him because the centre of his defence has been very, very strong and very, very steady. He's taking a big gamble, taking the, the, the key man away from there. He has replaced him, though, by Morris Malpass, who's such an assured figure. Goff's header out, collected here by Bowman. This is Daly. Playing it against Brewster. Chase on here for Jury. He won't get to that in time. So it's Mikarichenko and Haitley playing through the middle. Mikarichenko just off Haitley. Duncan Ferguson wide on the left, Jury wide on the right. I'm sure Rangers want all four to be attacking all the time in the late stages. Maybe a lot of work for Ferguson and McCall in the midfield area. McLaren losing out there to Murray. Picking his way through that ruck of players very neatly indeed. Neil Murray still has possession. Blocked by the legs of Van de Kamp. Scrambled away by Malpass. And here's McAnally. Still confident enough to sell a dummy inside his own box. The throw to Rangers. The onslaught continues. This is a good save from Guido van der Kamp. It's not orthodox to any man, but it gets here, blocks it with his knees, comes out again in sort of double block there, but I think just at the minute, United are just a lot bit six and sevens at the, at the heart of the defence. And now the substitution will be made by Dundee United. Jan Nixon coming on to replace Andy McLaren. 20 years old. So is Christian Daly, David Hanna is 19, the player coming on, very little older, that's Jaron Nixon from Trinidad, and no evidence here of the gloves this afternoon, the sun is shining but it's not at all warm. There it is, McAnally, and a space over in the far side for Brewster, Nixon waits in the middle, this could tie it up for United, there's Brewster, and Alan Ali Maxwell stood his ground there, got his angles right, he's not happy with his defence. And Brewster tried to finish it all by himself there. He's got uh, Jerome Nixon, who's pulled into a good position there, and I don't think he was all that happy with uh, him having trying the direct shot. Here's Nixon. Played off the ball there by Ian Ferguson. some unpleasant words with Nixon Mikarichenko seems to want to be involved David Hanna showing his sense and maturity in keeping Nixon away from the trouble spot they have a lot of hard work to do it's a booking there for both players for Nixon and for Jury Goff fires the ball forward there's Mikarichenko now Alec Cleland lofting it out towards Nixon all eyes for the referee. Dundee United have won the Kevin Scottish Cup. The handshake from Walter Smith to Ivan Golac. Gordon Wallace congratulates him. It's a truly remarkable finish to the season. Ivan, you promised success for Dundee United at the start of the season. How do you feel? I feel absolutely delighted for everybody, you know, connected with United, but more, more than anything for the players. What sort of emotions did you go through this afternoon? I'll tell you something, I feel very well, very very quiet. I, I knew, you know, we're going to make it. I knew we're going to make it because we're so determined, you know, before, before the game and we had so much relaxed. We knew it's going to be ours. 
And these supporters waiting for the moment when Morris Malpass appears to collect the trophy, decked in tangerine and black. The Right Honourable Ian Lang, Secretary of State for Scotland, presents the Scottish Cup to Morris Malpass. A moment he perhaps thought he would never enjoy. One of Scotland's top professionals over the last 10, 15 years, Morris Malpass, now collects the tenants' replica trophy. Okay. Morris, Morris, you've lived through the bad times. This must be a sweet one. Yes, after the last uh, few disappointments, it makes it especially, especially better. Uh, fantastic crowd, we've had a great week, and the boys were absolutely brilliant today. Did you always feel like you're the winning of this one? Yeah, we're confident. We've had good games against Rangers before. And we knew on the day, if we took our chances, well, we'd win. Those last few minutes must have taken forever to pass. The last four minutes were like four months. Is this something to build on, do you feel? I mean, can Dundee United take yeah, it from here and then got the cup final thing out of the way, finally? Yeah, I think that's it, the main thing. We've got that who do as you put it out of the way now. We can just go and enjoy our football and improve in the league next season. Davy, what about this mob behind me? They uh, certainly gave you some backing. No, it really did. It's a great day for everybody. I mean, we've been here, a lot of them have been here probably seven times. And for, to, for us to win it today, absolutely brilliant. Well, it's a way for everybody. What, what did you see of the goal? Nothing. <laughs> in the net, that was a, absolutely delighted. I thought Chris Hain was put it in to begin with. Then, good old Chris. Uh, Craig followed up, put it in. Different class. Here go. Well, if we can wait for a second, we'll get Craig Bruce going here as well. The man who tucked away that goal, it wasn't, your, uh, wasn't one of your long range efforts, but uh, it counted for a lot, didn't it? Nice goal of the life. I thought Christian did absolutely brilliant. Off the keeper, played it across the goal, and I thought, please come off the post. Came off the post. Uh, thank you. Probably the Rover stuff. What a season it's been for you. Fantastic. Uh, win the first division last year, the Wraith Rovers. To come uh, here, Hamden, win the Scottish Cup final. Brilliant. You must have got a surprise of your life when the, the attempted clearance from Ali Maxwell hit you. Well, that's right. Well, I saw Dave first. I think his pass back was slightly short. And I, I knew I could see uh, Maxwell was going to take every chance. So I just had a go. If you take every gamble, there's always a chance you'll get the rebound. And it just worked out great, great for the club. You've had your problems with the United supporter this season. Uh, do you feel you're turning the corner now? Well, I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I played set and half on that and to get away from the forward line. But I came back and played in the forward line today. The fans have been great and they deserve everything they've got. And just great for United, obviously, to win a cup final. Oh, it's just tremendous. I've been a few myself as a fan and uh, to play and win and to win is just a dream. Well done. Thanks. Jim, what a long, long wait. 20 years a long time, but my goodness, what are your feelings now? Just unbelievable, is it? Well, well worth it. Look at this. This is what it sees people deserve it more than anybody. You said right from the outset you would do it. It was your year. Aye, well, the gaffer made us believe that. And uh, I think we showed the day that we did believe it. Quite a goal to win it, though, wasn't it? Uh, well, that's what happens when you never, never say die. You never gave up the chase and you got the break. Tremendous outpouring of emotion and relief from the Dundee United fans. All the frustrations of those six losing finals at last forgotten. Dundee United had their hands on the cup at last. Well, after things had calmed down just a little, Ivan Golatz came back out and spoke to Rob McLean. Ivan, the dust has settled on a historic day for Dundee United. How are you feeling at this stage? Well, it's a great, great to be in a, and feel part of a history. Uh, the club waited for such a long and all those magnificent supporters, you know, and uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm delighted for them, you know. I'm delighted, first of all, for the players, really, because they, they, they put so much effort in uh, all the way through the season, but especially in a the cup, they were absolutely terrific. But our support all the way through, you know, competition was out of the world, and uh, that's, that's, for me, you know, it's a present for them. I think you've proved that belief matters an awful lot in football. That's the main thing in your life. That's the main thing, because uh, if you don't believe in yourself, you, know, you ain't got a chance. Uh, as we just had a chat, you know, a few minutes earlier, you know, if you do have somebody like David Hanna, who's only 19, to perform, you know, on such a big occasion, which is the biggest game of the season, and uh, the way it did, if he didn't believe, you know, if he hasn't been encouraged, he wouldn't produce, you know, such a quality display. And uh, for me, you know, that's the main thing. I just want to create more than happy, you know, dressing room, and everything starts from there. Hanna was superb, and Welsh's role in marking Hately was also crucial, wasn't it? Well. Um, Brian Welsh is absolutely superb all the way through the season and our most, you know, consistent player. And no doubt about it, uh, he's a player of the year, you know, and, uh, in, in the United team. 
because he played quite a lot of times against Haitley and uh, I must say, you know, just uh, he done a job more than superb. So uh, you're right, you know, the, the way he you know, played today was just something very special, you know. But to play alongside Gordon, who gives him so much confidence, you know, and uh, the way Maurice Malpas performed and Jim McInally, uh, you know, we are not far away from to be, you know, a real contender, you know, next year, you know, alongside Rangers and Aberdeen and Celtic for the title. Yes, you said you'd win something this season, you did. So what is the target next season? Is it the challenge closer it's, for the championship? Oh, no doubt about that. I just, you know, I've never been happy to be second best. You know, I just always want to see my team being among the best, if not the best. And today we proved that we, we, we got a chance, equality, to be the best uh, next year. But definitely, you know, just I want to see us being among three top teams on the table. And uh, I want to see us having a good run in Europe, uh, at least to get in a quarter final. And I'll be more than happy again that we get into semi-finals. Ivan Golac might just be about to be given the freedom of Dundee for finally delivering that Scottish Cup. And what of Rangers? Well, Walter Smith, clearly disappointed, spoke afterwards to Chick Young. Do you think the talk of double trebles was putting too much pressure on them over the last few weeks? I don't think so. If you look at the game in the second half, we pushed and pushed and tried to get the goal. And we maybe just didn't get a break. That happens to you in cup ties. We've had the breaks in other ones. We didn't get the break today. And that's the way a cup tie goes. That's what makes it so difficult to do as they have done and won the amount of trophies they have done in a row. If you put yourself into neutral corner, Walter, well, it was a great, great game. I thought the first half was a terrific match. Um, and obviously losing the goal as early in the second half, you know, made us push to get a goal and Dundee United could sit back and defend. And uh, to their credit, they did that well. Walter Smith, philosophical as always. Well, let's get the opinion now of Eamon Bannon and Terry Butcher. Coming firstly to you, Eamon, it was United's day, wasn't it? It certainly was. And all credit to them, they played very well the first half. Um, uh, the, the goal changed the game in, in the respect that Rangers then went on the attack and, and pummeled and pummeled the United defence but I must say they never really looked like conceding a goal it looked like United's day and it was They seemed, as Ivan Golic said to just have that conviction that this was going to be mm. their day It's amazing what positive thinking does uh, and all credit to Ivan he said right from the word go that he was going out there with a positive frame of mind he was taking the game to Rangers and that's exactly what he did Terry, would you put that down to United deserving to win or Rangers having an off day? I think it was just one of those things for, for Rangers, one of those days really. I mean, uh, the first half was a, was a great first half, chances either end and uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, a mistake or a great piece of perseverance by Christian Daly at, uh, right at the start of the second half did change the course of the game, as Eamon said. And then Rangers really had to, you know, step forward and Dundee United defended well and always looked dangerous on the break. So, uh, it's just one of those days for Rangers. Let's take a look back at some of the incidents in, in, the, uh, in the first half particularly, because it could have been also different, Terry. Early on, a Dave McPherson header, which had it got into the net, might have given us an entirely different game. Yes, it was a good corner. Uh, Dave rises well on the far post, and you just see one man on the line for Dundee United here, Jim McAnally, and it goes right to him but at a difficult height, and he just stoops down and heads it away. With the one person on the line, as, as we can see, there's no one on this near post, the ball goes right to Jim McAnally. And he stoops well and uh, either clears it with his forehead or his nose or his knee, I'm not quite sure, but he does clear it off the line. <laughs> At the other end, uh, Christian Dilly was always giving Rangers problems, Eamon, wasn't he? He beat the offside trap well here and, and you see Gary Stevens bursting over. There's Andy McLaren at the back post and he, he tried to play to the front post and it was well saved by Maxwell. He got behind the Rangers defence, decent enough ball in and brave goalkeeping. And Gary Stevens got injured at that point and had to leave the field. Back to the other end, Terry, and, uh, well, you can either decide this was very clever goalkeeping by Guido van der Kamp or a stroke of good luck. What do you think? Yes, Mark Haley takes it uh, very, very early, and it goes across the face of the goal. I think it was good judging by the goalkeeper there, but uh, I think Mark gets into space, gets away from Brian Walsh for perhaps the only time in the game, and hits it across, and uh, um, I think the keeper was quite relieved to see that go past. Craig Brewster was immense, particularly in the first 45 minutes, Eamon, wasn't he? He was. He, here he's taken on Dave McPherson, always looking to go into his favourite left foot. And a great strike was heading for the top corner. Again, Alan Maxwell did particularly well. Dave McPherson showed him in and opened up the goal for him, and it was a good strike and a good save. So, goalless in the first half, despite all the chances, but the second half was only two minutes uh, old when uh, the goal, which was to win the cup, was scored. Whose fault was it, Teddy? Well, I think David could have cleared the ball there, but decides to play it back to, to Alan Maxwell, and he smashes his shot, has a chance to get it again, doesn't get it. Christian Daly's followed up really well, then hits the post. And Craig Brewster, who's thought, well, I might get a chance of glory, eventually does. 
You can take two points of view on it, I suppose, Eamon. Credit to United, in particular, daily for the perseverance. But mm. I think if you're a defender, you have to say it was a bad goal to lose. It was a terrible goal to lose. I mean, the perseverance of Christian Daly's... I mean, that ball's whacked him at, at full tilt, and he's reacted very quickly. Ali Maxwell always dives in the ball. He gets it back, plays it across the goal, and thank you very much. It's so ironic, too, Terry, because Ali Maxwell had saved Rangers on several occasions in that first half and would do so again later. Yes, I think when the only blemish on a, on, a, on a very good display from him was the actual goal, which, which uh, lost the cup, really. But um, it's one of those situations, I've, I've had that happen as a manager when you know, the chances come for the defender to clear it, and he doesn't. So, uh, you know, all the credit to Christian Daly. He does get two attempts, as, as you say, Maxwell. And uh, even when it hits the post, of course, it, it could have bounced anywhere, really, I suppose, but it falls beautifully for Craig Brewster. Now, Rangers obviously then had to chase the game after going one down, and Stuart McCall does wonderfully well here, Terry, doesn't he? Yes, he beats, you know, as you see, two players there. Great bit of footwork, beats Jim McNally there. I think it's uh, Gordon Petrus comes across and a good bit of skill again. He's been four players, crosses the ball, and big Mikhailo Chango takes it early. And Alan McCoy is just behind him, as you can see there. I think had Ali known over in Russian, he would have scored. <laughs> good save, though, by Van der Kamp, Eamon. It was a tremendous save, and I, I felt a turning point in the game. It was a situation where Rangers were piling forward. Great save, and you could see the relief in the United players' faces almost. And the last real chance, which uh, fell to Rangers, fell to, to Mark Hitley, who hadn't had much out of Brian Welsh in the air all day, and hits this one well, Eamon, doesn't he? Well, he does. I mean, if he's scoring from that distance, you would, you would put a question mark over the goalkeeper. It's on his bad foot as well. A decent enough strike. And, you know, possibly a little goalkeeping error there. It scrums out of his hand, and he got on top of it. So, delight for United. And you must be pleased for all your old friends at Tannadice that finally they've won the cup. I am. I'm absolutely delighted. And... Uh, I mean, as you say, a, a lot of friends there know, I know exactly what it's like to lose a final. I know they'll be going up that, that road to Dundee, singing and dancing probably in the bus. And I know myself, it was a long journey up when you'd lost the cup. Uh, so very, very pleased for them. And Terry, as Walter Smith said, uh, it's disappointment at the end of the season for Rangers, but they've still done the double of League Championship and League Cup. It's hardly been a, been a poor season, has it? Yes, last season was always hard to live up to, winning the treble, but uh, they had a great chance of doing it this year. But all credit to Dundee United, they came with a lot of positive uh, thoughts about the game and uh, um, have gone away with the cup, so all credit to them. All right, thanks to you both. Well done, Eamon. Thanks, Terry. So there it is, the end of another Scottish football season, and few surely would grudge those Dundee United fans the chance to celebrate at last after so many disappointments in Scottish Cup finals. Craig Brewster will be, well, the goal-scoring hero, but every one of those men in Tangerine is a hero tonight. Our congratulations to them from all of us until the next sports scene. Goodbye for now.